Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you're seeing this. I'm Mr. Matthews, and this is another day in the virtual classroom. So today, 8th grade math, we are talking about exponents. Now, I want you to start you off with a little clip from, well, a very utopian idea put in the movie. Let's watch. Trevor. Then what is it you're doing? I'm paying it forward. I know you want me to go. Yeah. I'll go. What's paying it forward? Okay, so in this film, and you're about to see it in a second, a little boy comes up with a utopian idea. And this character sort of surprises his mom by like fixing a car or something. Um, and the math comes in very soon. That's me. That's me. And... That's three people. And I'm going to help them. But it has to be something really big. Something they can't do by themselves. So I'd do it for them. Then they do it for three other people. That's nine. And I do three more. That's 20. Seven, so I, I'm not really good at math, but it gets big really fast. You know? That's an understatement. So when we're talking about exponents, you might have noticed the running pattern here. It went from 1 to 3 to 9 to 27. These are powers of 3. No? Now, the class quickly des descends into arguments about the logistics of it. And the teacher's going to come in and say, okay, listen, we know that this is a very difficult idea because of, well, reasons, but the math is there. We're talking about exponents. So just to recap what basic exponents are. We're going to get to energy bases here in a second. But essentially, exponents are perfectly. Exponents are us math uh, mathematicians' lazy way of doing repeated multiplication. That's all it is. It's just repeat. We just re multiply over and over and over again by the same numbers, and we needed a very short and easy way to do that, so we invented exponents. Now, basic, basic, basic stuff would include things like this. So let's go with our movie problem, right? Let me bring that back up. Let me see if I can get it right on the math part. Okay, so powers of three. So three to the like when he's helped when he when no one's done yet three to the zero power. That's equal to one times three zero times. So it really hasn't happened yet, but three to the first power. When one person is taking on this utopian idea, uh, that's equal to one times three one time. And then those three people are going to have three people, so that's one times three twice. And then those three people will help three people and so on. So 3 to the third power is 1 times 3 three times. My handwriting is awesome. Okay, so things to understand and take away from this. So the exponent 
is this number on the corner that tells you how many times you are multiplying 1 times the base. And I guess that is a very important word to know. The big number The word for that is the base. The exponent is the small number on the corner. This little guy. So, in a nutshell, exponents are a way of doing abbreviated quick multiplication, like repeated multiplication. And this little utopian idea from the movie is implying that, you know, if I help three people and those th three people help three people and it just goes on forever, you could change the world in a positive way. And all the kids are arguing because they know that it's probably not going to happen. But that's what the fun of a movie is. Believe in the unbelievable. Okay. Now, once we accept what exponents are, there are a lot of rules for how we use this notation and what it means. And that's what we are practicing today. For right now, we're going to go over just some skills that have to do with exponents. And these are practice problems that have assigned you. So there it is. OK, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with exponents with an integer base. And integer, of course, we'll grab a line here. The word integer, this is meaning positive and negative whole numbers. So the base here is a negative. Now, I've linked to a video on this, but there's a very important difference between these two problems. Look at this. So if this problem had said, negative 1 to the fourth power. That is very different from negative 1 to the fourth power. That is the number one thing. That is a big, big, big issue that some of you are going to have, and you've got to pay attention to that. Speaking of attention, okay, so right here in our math practice standards. Attend to precision. That might have made that unreadable. Attending to precision is what, anyway. So, these two things are very different. So, let me explain. This, right here, I probably need to make this as wide as possible. So this right here is saying negative one time uh four times. Okay. I should have started that with a one. My fault. Let me start that over. Alright, that's one times negative one four times. So that's one times negative one times negative one times negative one times negative one again. This one is different. This one is a negative symbol. It's almost like an extra negative one all by itself, but it's like a negative symbol before any of the multiplication. So really, the only thing going to the fourth power is the one. So this would be one times one four times. So that's one, two, three, four. And that's going to be a, an important detail that you have got to, that you've got to watch out for attending precision. So the four times is right there. The four times is right. Let me back, back that up. It's weird when they're all ones. Okay. So let's talk about an answer. 
Okay, so this problem is this variety. So it's a negative symbol that's separated from all the multiplication. So it's 1 to the 4th power. So 1 times 1 to 4 times is equal to 1. And all of this multiplied by the negative symbol is going to be negative 1. So that's the answer. If it had been the other way, it would have actually been a positive one. But this, the way this is written, it's going to come out negative 1 because there were no parentheses. And there are videos instructing you on how to pay attention to parentheses. Put in my answer. Get the noise. Move on. Let's try another one. Aha. So this next one is different. All right, so now look at this one. This one does have the parentheses. So what this one is saying is 1 times negative 1 twice. Now back to our integer rules, negative times negative is a positive. So 1 times negative 1, OK, well first, positive times negative is negative. So 1 times negative 1, we're at negative 1. But if we're at negative 1 and we multiply by another negative 1, that's going to be positive. So in this case, the answer would be positive 1. Last one I'm going to do from this skill. And we'll move on to something else. Okay, so now this one, going back to like, okay, so repeated reasoning. My fraction and rate, repeated reasoning. Okay, now, I've, like based on the first one I did, I'm going to remember how that worked. So I know that when I do this one, oh, that's a negative symbol just separated because what this is really... This is a negative whatever 2 to the third power comes out to be. So this is a negative symbol, but we're going to go ahead and do 1 times 2 to 3 times separated from that negative symbol. So 2 times 2 times 2, so that would be 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So that's 8, but remember, add that negative symbol on the outside, so that should be negative 8. That's how those work. So let's move on to something a little different. Okay. Let's try this on and see how it fits. Okay, so what if you have uh, negative fractional bases. Now this is where a lot of you panic and you think, oh no, there are fractions, but you're going to have to face that. So let's just use the exact same rules we've been using. Again, look for and make use of regularity. Okay, so we're doing the second power of whatever this is. Okay, so that means we're going to be doing 1 times whatever's here twice. So that'd be negative one fourth times negative one fourth. So I do it twice, okay. Well multiplying fractions is just numerator times numerator, that's top times top. One times one is one. Four times four is sixteen. 
So now the question is whether it's a positive or a negative answer. Well, we go back to our integer rules. Negative times negative is positive. So my answer is just should be 1 16th. And it is. Sweet. Let's try another one. Okay, here we go. So again, um, we're just using the same integer rules. Here's the base, and here's the exponent. So that means I'm going to do 1 times whatever this is twice. Negative 1 and 2 thirds times negative 1 and 2 thirds. Now we got to dip back into our sixth grade fraction skills here, and instead of me doing uh, mixed numbers, I'm going to actually convert these into improper fractions. So this would actually become one times now three times one is three plus two is five. So be negative five thirds. Again, how I did that. This is just a shortcut way. I mean, there's a long way. If you want to go ahead and consider this as a whole number, which would be 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3. That's one way to think about it. And then we'll draw a little cloud bubble here. Okay. So that's so the whole number is either 3 over 3. And then the 2 thirds is the leftover. So that'd be 5 thirds. Again, it's negative. So that'd be negative 5 thirds. The fast way to do mixed numbers and improper, and it's just a shortcut we all use as mathematicians. Take the denominator, 3, multiply it by the whole number, so 3 times 1 is 3, and then add the numerator. That's 5, so be negative 5 thirds. Okay, well, top times top, bottom times bottom, so that'd be 5 times 5, which would be 25. And then 3 times 3 is 9, so 25 ninths, okay? Uh, and then negative times negative is positive, so my answer should be 25 over 9. And it is. Sweet. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move right along to another practice skill. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Let me clear this out. Blink, blink, blink. Okay. So more exponent rules. What is the sign? Okay, so let me clarify. When they are asking for what is the sign, they're saying either it's either positive, negative, or zero. That's what they're saying. So this goes back into understanding how exponents work, which depending whether they're net, they're even or odd. So for instance. This little guy right here, this multiplication problem, what you're really only trying to discern is whether they're going to be even values or odd values. Even or odd, not as a positive or negative, I'm sorry. <laughs> whether they are positive or negative. So let's think about these um, individually. So negative 2 in parentheses to the fourth power, okay? Since it's even, okay? That exponent is even. That's important because of this negative symbol. That means you'll have an, that means four negative symbols, okay? And every two negative symbols makes a positive value because negative times negative makes positive, which means that this is going to be a positive value. 
That's all you need to know for this lesson. That is a horrible positive symbol. Let's try that again. Ugh, that's as good as it's going to get. Okay, so I know this will be positive. Now, it's being multiplied by negative 3 to the 7th power. I really don't care what that comes out to be. All I need to know is that's an odd number. That exponent is odd, which means this negative 3 is going to happen an odd number of times. That is very important information because if it's an odd number of times, that means that this thing is going to come out negative. And any positive number times any negative number is going to be a negative value. So for this lesson, you are not really required to do any calculator or very long paperwork to figure out what an answer is. You just have to understand the principles, which means this is going to be a negative answer. Some of these are going to look really gross and challenging, but they are just great thinking problems, like this one coming up. So like, check this out. Don't hit the panic button button. Don't hit the panic button before I get a chance to show you how it works. Okay. So this looks terrifying, but it's really just a stressor on your logic skills. Okay. So again, we want the signs. That's either gonna be positive, negative, or zero. Okay. Now this little piece of information here, again, I'm cubing, so I'm boxing important information, this is the B is for, so this little piece of information is super key. X is less than zero, which means X is negative. X. I'm not typing this. I'm smart. Blink, 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 blink. Okay, if x is less than zero, then x has to be negative. Okay, so assuming that, let's look at this top bit. Okay, so so when it says x to the 59th power. I don't even care what that comes out to be. All I need to know is that that's an odd value. And I mean odd strange. I mean like it's even odd. It is odd. So that means that x to the 59th, that is a negative. x is a negative value. And any negative value raised to an, oh wait, yeah, no, I'm right. So negative values raised to an, an odd power are negative. That's it. That's over 2.3 x. Okay, okay, okay. Now this part is 2.3 times x. Now we know that x is negative, so that means that this is a negative value divided by a negative value. I don't even care what the answer is. It's just logic. So if the numerator is negative because we know that x is negative and x is being raised to an odd value. And I know the denominator is negative because 2.3 is a positive number being multiplied by a negative number. We'll go back to our integer laws. Negative numbers divided by other negative numbers equals a positive outcome. And that is being multiplied right here by this 4 fifths, which is positive. So positive times positive would be a positive answer. Yeah, these are rigorous, but that's good for you. It's good to really have to think about these. And what I love about these, it is not solvable with a calculator. It is not going to happen. You have got to logic your way through the problem. Okay. Let's try a different skill. Ah, yes. Times zero. Your sorry, sorry, playing the video instead of moving on to a lesson.
Okay, we're back. So, multiplying powers. Um, so this comes down to understanding some very some abstract ruling. So, blah, blah, blah. so when we say like math practice number number two, reason abstractly and quantitatively. Okay, so the abstract here is this. So any value, let's say, let's make it more concrete. Let's say x to the third power, right? Times x to the seventh power. Okay, how many x's are we really looking at? This is 1 times x three times. 1, 2, that's three of them, okay? And this is 1 times x seven times. Oh, goodness, 1. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my goodness. Okay. And everything's being multiplied together. So, how many x's do you have? Three and seven. You have ten of them. So, lazy mathematicians like the rest of us have realized oh, well, when you're multiplying, two exponential expressions that have the same base, you can just add the exponents together. So x to the third times x to the seventh is going to turn into x to the third plus seven. Yes, that's a plus sign. So that's the abstract rule, is that if you're multiplying two exponential expressions with the same base, in this case they both have the base of x, you just put the exponents together by adding. So in our problem, 11 to the x, x right here, that's what we want. We want to know what is this going to be. Well, 11 to the 4 times 11 to the 5th, well, what would x be? What's 4 plus 5? It would just be 9. It would be 11 to the 9th power. my last one so I get the special noise. Let's see if it let me do another one. Here we go. Okay. So new problem. I think I'm gonna try and move this. Let's see if I can save that. We'll save our little abstract rule there. Okay. So let's get another one. Let's get another problem in here. Let's do it. Okay, so here, here's our problem. We read the expression. Okay, so let's go ahead and okay, make sure I'm doing my cubing. Okay, so we always want to... Wait, I, like, I did the other way. Let's do an underline. Okay, so I want to circle before numbers and oh, underline the question. That's probably more valid here. So underlining the question. Okay, so it's telling me to rewrite the expression in the form of x to the n. Okay, well, I've got x to the third times x to the fourth. Okay, so according to our abstract rule, that would be x to the three plus four because they are the same base. So that would be x to the seventh power. Nice. Because now we're going to practice powers of powers.
So let me get you a new one in here. Blink, blink, blink. Okay, so there's a different abstract rule when it comes to powers of powers. Uh, in the last one, we talked about how when they have the same base, you just add them together, but this one is a little different. Okay, so we need to take a really close look at what this is saying. I know it's telling me to solve for n. I get that. That's my, that's, I'm underlining my question. But this, when it says 2 to the 4th power raised to the 2nd power, okay, we need to think back to our original exponent rules. What does this actually mean? This means 1 times whatever the base is to the 4th power times 2 to the 4th power twice because the exponent is 2. Okay, so now using that original principle, this goes back to that last exponent law we use, which means when you're multiplying exponential expressions that have the same base, you can add their exponents together. So this would be 2 to the 4 plus 4, which equals 2 to the 8. But then mathematicians didn't like doing all this step-by-step -step stuff because they noticed it worked every single time. Now look. We went from having a 4 and a 2 to having an 8. They multiplied. So here's the abstract rule. When you have x to a power of, uh, let's just say, 3, and it's in its own set of parentheses, and you're raising that to another power, like a power of 5, you can just multiply the powers together. That's going to be x to the 3 times 5, which is x to the 15. Now, if we apply that rule to this problem, 4 times 2 is equal to 8, so our answer is 2 to the 8th power. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost got this one wrong. Look what it's asking. It says solve for n. So all I needed was the power. So let me back that up. So all I really need to say is n equals 8. And that turns out to be what it wanted. Let's try another one. The laws themselves are not that complex. The problem is going to be where students memorize them but don't practice. And then when it comes time to use them, they mix them up and they use the wrong ones. That is usually the case. Yeah, if you're not going to practice, you will make mistakes. It's just a matter of muscle memory. Okay, so I've done enough of these to realize the powers of powers. Okay, so rewrite, let's see what it's asking me to do. I'm going to underline the question. So rewrite the expression in the form of 4 to the n. So I'm, I'm not just giving them the x one. I actually need to rewrite the expression. Okay, gotcha. Uh, now, according to my x laws, powers of powers, so this is going to be 4 to the 2 times 4. This, this sounds really familiar. So this is going to be 4 to the 8th power. So that's my answer. Okay, so 4 to the 8th power is what I need to type in. There are special, on con, there are special keystrokes for how to do that. Man, they love these 4s and 2s. Hang on. The next one was like another 4 to the... 4 times 2 in the, in the exponent slot. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, sometimes they don't want you to be as good a calculator as you are a really good thinker. So, check this one out and see how this one Maybe like if you're like me, your brain had to try to go, wait, what are they asking? And then suddenly your brain will go, oh, I get it. Okay, so look at this. So we've been solving for exponents. And this, all of a sudden, they flipped it. And they said, no, no, no. We want to see if you even notice what we're asking for. And that's important that you actually, you know, read the question. So this one 
It says solve for n. That's my, that's my directions. That's my question, basically. They've already done the exponent law for you. They simply want you to want you to show that you know what the base is. This is seven to the second power being raised to the fourth power. Well, this is that's just gonna be seven to the eighth power. So the answer is just seven. It's just staring at you in the face. That's gonna trick some people. They weren't ready for it. Like, oh no, no, no! I'm just worried about exponents. No, we're worried about the base as well. Okay, so let's do something a little bit different. And we're going to be just dividing some powers. Let's see, get a picture. All right, so dividing powers. Here's how this works. Now, this is one of the most infamous phrases in algebra and mathematics going forward, this is when teachers love to say these words. Okay, canceling out. This is the abstract moment for this lesson. Um, here's what they really mean by that. Okay, so anything divided by itself is equal to one. That's that's the first one, and one times anything is just itself. Okay, so those are the two rules we're just gonna completely abuse in this lesson. So when we cancel something out, here's what's happening. See over here in this problem? We basically have one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got a to the sixth power being divided by a to the first power. That's what's happening right now. So basically, what we could think of this as, we could think of this as a to the first over a to the first times a to the fifth over one. Okay, so the canceling out, like the, the cheater, the fast way to do it is like this. We could break this up and then realize that this is going to be a to the fifth power is our answer because this is equal to one. And one times anything is itself and anything over itself is one. So it's a to the fifth power. But the canceling method, you just cross out one a on top and one a on bottom and everything is golden. That's one, two, three, four. That's five a's on top and nothing on bottom. Now that's nothing. That, that's not a zero. That's one, because anything divided by itself is equal to one, okay? Why am I looking down? I'm looking up. So that's what canceling is. It's really just an abuse of some abstract rules to do division very, very, very quickly. So let's try another one. I'm going to go ahead and leave the cancel out notes. What was the eight of the fifth power? Nice. This is a good thinker. Because the calculator won't help you. I don't think he said to himself. Okay, so check. Look at this very carefully. So we really want to attend to precision on this one. Four to the six divided by four to the something equals four to the zero. Okay, 4 to the 6 divided by 4 to the something equals 4 to the 0. Hmm. I mean, I had to take a second about that. Hmm. Well, I guess. I guess I want to think about both sides of the equation. 4 to the 6 divided by 4 to the x equals 4 to the 0. Okay. Whenever I see zeros, I've got, I've got to stop and think twice. And I've been doing this for a very long time because I'm old. 
don't forget that 4 to the 0 power is equal to 1. That's important to remember. 4 to the 0 power is equal to 1. So what we're really saying is 4 to the 6 divided by 4 to the whatever is equal to 1. And then we go back to that abstract rule that anything divided by itself is equal to 1. So this would have to be the same thing. So for it to be the same, x would have to equal 6. So I'm pretty sure x would just be 6. Check and see what happens. Oh yeah. So I like that. That was a very good thinking problem. We're going to try something a little bit different now. Let me clear out some scrap. I'm going to do this quickly because I got to do the live stream here in just a second. I just love doing math problems apparently. Okay, 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 okay. So we have time for one or two more, and we're going to be doing. This one actually gives you multiple choice in the lesson. Okay, powers of products and functions. Okay, okay, okay. So this is just you know an expansion of your exponent um, expertise. It's a lot of exp in words. So let's look at what they want you to do. Okay, select the equivalent expression. So one of these has to be the same. It says choose one answer. So I know there's only one. Um, okay, so we're doing y to the third power times 2 to the fifth power, all that raised to the second power. Okay, so this is, it can be understood a few different ways. Essentially, the exponent 2 is going to apply to both of these terms. So you can pretend like each one of them had their own individual uh, second power. Now remember back to our abstract rules, when you raise powers of powers, you multiply them together. That means this is going to be y to the 3 times 2. And this is going to be 2 to the 5 times 2. So that would be y to the 6 times 2 to the 10th. Now where is that? y to the 6. Okay, it looks like it's d, which is slightly cut off. It looks like the answer would be d. And there it is. So that's what you need to understand, that when you have these uh, binomials, that means there's two terms being raised to a power, the power just applies to both terms. Okay? So one more, and then we're going to call it a day for this street, for this uh, practice video in my wonderful studio that is still my room. Working on changing that, but uh, other things are taking priority. Okay, so let me clear this out for our last problem before I switch over to the live stream of the day, which we'll be doing more of these because math is fun. Okay, so. This is a very, very similar problem to what we just did. So a lot of repeated reasoning. Math practice standard number eight with this one. Actually, you know what? Let me see if I can find one differently. That'd be six. Uh, everybody in your head, what's four times three? Twelve. What's two times three? Three. So it'd be six to the twelfth to the third. All right. Yay, look, yes. Okay, so I did get the, I did, I got what, we, what I wanted. I got a different style of question. Okay, here we go. Last one of the day for today's preview lesson. That's not much of a preview lesson if I'm posting it after class, but that's just thanks to editing and posting time. Okay, powers of products and quotients. Now we actually have a quotient, which is the answer to a division problem. So, select the three, ooh, 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 reading our questions is good. Okay, so, 
select three expressions that are equivalent to six squared. Well, that's kind of mm, interesting. I'm going to circle. I'm going to circle important numbers. So, okay, so six squared. Okay, well, I guess we'll do one at a time. So this, so 6 over 9, this is a cancel out problem. So 6 over 9 over 68. So the canceling out is kind of like you subtract the exponents. Remember when we did powers of powers, we multiplied them. Well, this is the opposite of that because it's division. So if I've got 9 sixes on top and I've got 8 sixes on bottom, I can cancel out 8 of them leaving one remaining on top. So this would be 6 over 1. And that's being raised to the second power, which is, yeah. I like A. A is one of them. Okay, this one. So, oh, canceling again. So cancel, cancel, cancel. Okay, now wait, wait, wait. Uh-oh. I've got 3 this time. That's 6 to the third power, so nope. I should have done that in a different color to make it easier to see. Okay, so it is not going to be that. Okay, so 6 4th. Okay, so this is another canceling problem. So if I've got 6 to the 4th over 6 to the squared, that's 2 6 on bottom and 4 6 on top, which means I can cancel out 2 from each. So I'm going to be left with 6 squared. That's a 2 over 1. So that's good. 2 times 2 times 2. Times, okay, this. <laughs> this is 2 to the 6th power. Cheeky. Not going to fall for it. Nope. Not you. Okay, so this. This is kind of mixing a lot of our exponent rules together. This is. Okay, so the top. No, okay, so 6 to the 5th times 6 to the 7th. That would be 6 to the 12th. Remember, we add those exponents together when you're multiplying exponential expressions that have the same base. So 6 to 12 over 6 to 10. So first you'd have to understand those exponent rules. Then you have to understand the canceling out rules. So I've got 12 of these on top and 10 of these on bottom. And I start canceling them out. I'll have 2 left. So I have 6 squared on top and only 1 on bottom. So I like this one as well. So apparently it's A, C, and E. A, C, and E. Get them all. Nice. That's going to wrap up today's lesson. Uh, please join me on the live stream for class. That's going to be happening here in seven minutes. Some people are already logged in and waiting for me to show up. You need to check classroom for things like um, assignment reminders, uh, practice, session, practice things you can do to prepare yourselves for your assignments, any and all documents I list, plus just generalized announcements. I hope you are safe. I hope your families are well. I hope everyone is doing the best they can. Um, as I'm closing, I'm going to give you a couple of mini assignments that, of course, no one will know if you did them. It's just for you. But here are some things I think you should do on a daily basis. Number one, get up to an alarm. I don't care if it's 9 a.m., 9.30, whatever. Just get up to an alarm. Number two, make your bed. Every day is better with a made bed like that. Okay. Number three, clean yourself up and put on fresh clothes. It is tempting to just roll out of bed, throw on a hat, and sit down in front of the computer or your Chromebook or whatever. Just start your day well with clean clothes, a made bed, and getting up on time. Until next time, this is Mr. Matthews in our virtual classroom environment. And I'll see you next time.